Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a look at a survival shelter called the A-Frame. Stand by. Alright guys, so here's my poncho roll, just to go over it briefly. I have 550 cord with some jam knots right here. As you guys can see, I have my quick deploy ridge line and then my four tent stakes that I'll use to put down the corners and hang my shelter. So I've got my poncho, I've got my quick deploy ridge line, I've got my tent stakes in my back pocket for ease of access, and I'm ready to start making my shelter. Before we make any survival shelter, we want to ensure a few things prior to. Talk about the four W's, the four W's being water, wood, wind, and widow makers. For that reason, we want to pick a shelter location that is close to water so we can resupply, has dead, dry wood around it for fire making to warm that shelter, is out of the wind and then I want to be away from widow makers that fourth W widow makers are large dead standing trees they can fall over with a nice wind which is another reason to be out of the wind and then look for widow makers I have no dead standing trees or Widowmakers in my immediate location. So this is gonna be a good location for my shelter. Now with a survival shelter or a shelter for evasion or a military poncho hooch like the one we're gonna make, we wanna make sure we adhere to the bliss principle. Now bliss, B-L-I-S-S, -S, being blended. Our shelter needs to be blended in with our environment. It needs to be low to the ground. It needs to be of a regular shape. It needs to be small just for us and our equipment. It then secluded away from natural lines of drift, away from avenues of approach with cover and concealment from the air and ground and multiple routes of escape if we need to escape quickly. I'm in is a nice thicket of gamble oak where I can set up a shelter that is going to be uh, low to the ground and this shelter is going to be favorable just for this condition. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my poncho down. I'm going to set up my ridge line to hang my poncho. This is going to be the first point of control in trying to maintain that low shelter configuration. When we keep it low, we want to make sure that we're not above waist height. I used to tell my guys no higher than near thigh height. To attach my ridge line, I'm going to use a simple toggle method for the near side using that bowline. And I want to, the first thing I want to do is grab enough cordage out of this to wrap around the tree and then create that toggle and I'll find a toggle on the ground. I want to take enough cordage out of this uh, quick deploy bridge line to get around the girth of the tree. The other thing I want to do is my Prusik knots right here with the bank line. I want to move those down the length of the cordage so when I wrap around the tree I'm not trying to dig these out later. Now we're ready to wrap around the tree. All right, so I've got my cordage, I've got my little toggle. I'm ready to go around my tree. I'm gonna go up right here on my tree for my near side anchor point. All I'm gonna do is wrap around the tree with my cordage, put my fingers through my end of the line bowline, grab the standing end, pull it through slightly. I'm gonna take my toggle and that loop I've created with my standing end in that uh, end of the line bowline, I'm gonna take my toggle and just put it right in Hold it in place like this, and then now all I have to do is 
tighten it up to the tree and now I'm ready to run to my far side anchor point to construct my trucker's hitch and complete my ridge line. Now I'm at my second anchor point, my far side anchor point, and I'm ready to construct my trucker's hitch. To construct my trucker's hitch, all I need to do is I have my running end here, I have my standing end, which will form the basis of my ridge line. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to release some of the slack out, and you guys can see the string is falling. I'm going to grab approximately two to three feet away from the actual tree, my second side anchor point, my far side, and all I'm gonna do is twist my fingers, put my thumb and forefinger over top so my fingers are facing me, and then I'm gonna grab the string, twist away, lay that loop over top of what will become my ridge line, my standing end, and I'm gonna grab the standing end and pull it through, much like we did with that end of line bowling on the opposite side. All right, so I have my cordage. I'm gonna let some slack out. I'm gonna grab and pinch with my fingers and thumb, approximately two to three feet away from the tree, my far side anchor point. My thumb is on the opposite side of my ridge line. My fingers are on my side. I'm going to grab the cordage. I'm going to twist, creating this loop. You can see my thumb and two fingers are through. I'm going to take this, lay it on top of my standing end closest to me, and then pull tight, and that is my trucker's hitch. So up close and personal here, guys, you can see I have my cordage right here, and I let some slack out from my far side anchor point. Now with my thumb and forefinger, I'm gonna grab my cordage, grab my cordage, my fingers are on the near side, on my side, my thumb is on the opposite side of my cordage on my ridge line. I'm gonna grab at approximately two to three feet away from the far side anchor point. I'm going to twist this cordage when I twist this cordage, I'm going to create a loop. That loop, all I have to do now is place it directly over top of my standing end closest to my far side anchor point, so away from my near side tree, the tree that's already tied up. Then I reach through that loop I've created, grab the cordage, and pull tight. And what I've created is a trucker's hitch. Now all I have to do is take the remainder of my cordage, wrap it through, and I like to go through twice. Go through twice of that loop of that trucker's hitch to create that trucker's hitch anchor point that I can pull my ridge line tight. Take the remainder of my cordage, put it through the loop. It doesn't matter exactly how you put it through there, but I like to go twice through my loop because it creates its own bite. Just go twice through the right side and you'll see I've already kind of created a secondary bite on my cordage. Now all I have to do is just pull tight. So I'm pulling tight and you'll see the bite right here. My trucker hitch is holding it in place because I went through my trucker hitch twice with the remainder of my cordage and it creates a shallow bite right here on the trucker hitch and on my far side anchor point in between my tree. And you notice I can play music on my ridge line because it's still very tight, but I want to finish it off. I pinch that trucker hitch, that bite I've created to hold it in place. I'm going to grab my cordage. I'm going to grab a good chunk. I'm going to go up through up through my triangle that I mentioned while still holding this and you'll notice you'll notice right here at the bottom I've created another loop I want to leave that loop open because I'm going to put my safety hitch through that and so holding the bite I take this loop and I'm going to go through the loop I've created right here and then just pull tight and pull it tight up against you just pull it up tight, make it nice and tight. As long as it's still twangy, you're good to go. Now with the remainder of my cordage, I just find my end. So remainder of that cordage, I find my end, put it in between my pinky and ring finger. I'm gonna loop it around my thumb, and then I'm just gonna hank all the excess up. 
and I'm gonna put it in this bottom loop I've created in between that loop to hold in place and then just pull tight on the remainder of the slack of that loop and now my cordage is up and it's out of the way. So now what I can do is I have two toggles that I pulled off a tree. I'm gonna put these in my pocket. I'm gonna grab my poncho and lay it out lengthwise underneath my ridge line so I can get hanging the poncho for the A-frame. Now, before I lay out my poncho, what I wanna do is tie off the hood to make it watertight so water can't get in. And all I have to do is tighten up the hood as best as possible with this string and then tie a simple overhand nut. So I've got my near side Prusik right here and I have a toggle ready to go. On my ponchos laid out, I'm just gonna grab the middle grommet of my poncho. I'm going to feed that Prusik knot with my bank line through the grommet and then put a toggle through to hold up that portion of my shelter. I've got my grommet and my Prusik knot right here. I'm just gonna feed it through. And I have the loop, the open loop, holding up my poncho. Just grab my toggle, put it through that loop. And the poncho is now suspended just using a simple toggle with the Prusik knots up top. Now that I have this, all I have to do is go to the opposite side and do the same thing to the other side. You'll notice that I have, you know, a loose poncho right here. All I have to do now, because the Prusik knot will hold the poncho in place, is simply just slide it down my ridge line until it's in a tight position. And now my poncho is tight and up off the ground. All right, so now I'm ready to stake off my shelter. I'm gonna stake off all four corners of my A-frame to create that A-frame shape. And I always carry stakes with me as part of my emergency shelter kit. So instead of pulling from the landscape, creating stakes, and then cutting up more cordage to uh, put those stakes in the ground to anchor my shelter, I carry the stakes. And what I like to do is I like to take my stake, I'll have one toggle, and I'll put this cordage through the end grommet on the corner, and then just put the toggle through that string to anchor in my shelter. And that's how I'm gonna do all four sides. I've got my corner grommet, take my take my stake with the cordage, put the cordage of the stake or the lanyard through the grommet. I'm gonna take my toggle, put it through the lanyard of the stake, and now it's holding it together. Now all I have to do is just put it in the ground and step on it. So what I want to do now is get some foliage from the area and put it over top of my shelter to hide those straight lines that you guys see coming off my poncho, my ridge line, and then the sides of my poncho onto the ground. I wanna put foliage over that so I can start blending into my environment. We've met all the other criteria so far, small, secluded, somewhat of an irregular shape, but we're gonna make it look less like a regular shape and more irregular by adding foliage to it. All I need to do is just hang it off and start breaking up the outline. All right, so I've got pine boughs across my shelter trying to break up that straight line that you see and make it somewhat more of an irregular shape. What I can do now is grab handfuls of leaves and sprinkle it over top. The leaves that stay up top will help blend it to the background. The leaves that fall to the bottom will help breaking up that outline or that straight line at the bottom of my shelter created by that poncho. So 
So that completes the A-frame shelter. Remember, four W's, water, we want to be near the source so we can get it. Two, wood, we want to have wood or dry wood available to create a fire at night to stay warm. Three, wind, we want to be out of the wind. You guys can see it's very, very windy today. Trying to stay out of the wind as best as possible. And then four, widow makers, large dead standing trees that could fall over, especially with the wind that we have today. I want to be away from those. When building the shelter, remember to adhere to bliss. We want to be blended into our environment. You can see we have camouflage up top along with the camouflage poncho to blend into our environment with the pine boughs and the leaves kind of topping everything off. We want to have a low shelter, low to the ground. We want to have that irregular shape. We use the pine boughs and a little bit of the poncho, the drag in the middle to help create an irregular shape. We want to be small, small as possible, just big enough for us and our equipment. That's all we need. And then finally secluded. We want to be in a way off avenues of approach, off lines of drift, have cover and concealment from the air and from the ground, multiple avenues of escape. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment in the comment section. I want to thank you guys for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.